Well, hello there, and welcome to this week's Grow Wealthy Grooming. I am your host, River Lee. I am the founder of The Savvy Groomer, where I teach busy pet professionals what to do with their money and their business on their terms. So let's go ahead and start. I'm trying to figure out what is going on with my camera. I'm all backwards today. It feels very weird. Uh, it's fine. It'll all work out. Um, it is going to be a short, short show today. I am speaking at the Badass Cat Conference for the National Cat Groomers. And I need to be at the speaker get together at 730. So I apologize today is going to be a little shorter than usual, but it'll all be good. So let's go ahead and talk about today's topic. Boom. What to do when you're accused. Um, I thought this would be a great topic. It was actually suggested by somebody in uh, the conference. And I thought it would be a great topic to explore because I think there are a lot of instances where you guys end up accused by a person, whether that is from, you know, you saying you cut a pet or saying that you didn't do something you know, whatever it is that you were accused of. And I'm not talking about your bosses, I'm talking about clients. So let's go ahead into my notes. <laughs> Sorry guys, it is just one of those days, that's how you know it's live. Whoop whoop. Okay, so the very first thing I want you guys to do when someone accuses you is to contact your insurance company. The reason why is because you need, to, now again, this is generally not to file a claim. I want you to find out what is covered and what is not covered and what they need you to collect. Um, I once had a dog in my grooming salon that had, basically the dog had, you know, we bathed the dog, there was nothing wrong with the dog. The dog left fine and happy and perfect which we had on camera, when the dog went home, the dog had rubbed its face raw. So it had some eye gookies um, when it came in. And then when it left, you know, it just rubbed its face on the carpet and actually scratched its eye. Now, who's responsible for that? That's what you need to contact your insurance company about. So I personally contacted my insurance company to find out what the best course of action is, what they needed from me, what we should be doing and that leads me into the next thing you need to be doing you need to gather documentation pictures video anything that you have of note so in my mobile what i do is i take a before and after picture of every cat why because if i'm ever accused of something i have that now i've been toying with the idea of having a video I had video in my grooming salon, but that was primarily for customers telling us things like, you know, shave the dog down, the wife comes back and there's an issue. Um, but later I had it in the back. Um, A, because I, if I was ever accused, if my employee did anything, I wanted to have video and audio. Um, because there are some times when dogs are flipping out and let's be honest, it's not your fault the dog is flipping out. Sometimes the dog's just being bananas. So I want you guys to gather up any documentation, you know, check, you know, make sure you have the written copy of the policies that they signed. If it was e-signed, make sure you have what email or how it was delivered, when it was delivered, anything of note. Did they write the pet had some other pre-existing condition? Sometimes it's as simple as, um, I remember one time I didn't have an issue, but I remember they had told me their pet was under 10 because on my website it has like age brackets. And then they actually put, I believe it was something crazy like 18 or 19 on the little index card. Um, and under health conditions, they had told me none on online booking, but because I had given them the index card to fill out, which I did for everybody, they had written down the pet had had health concerns that they had not made me aware of until after the first groom, which was very uncomfortable, but sometimes that's what happens. So take your pictures, 
you know, take anything you have of note, whether that is the products you were using, um, any behavioral things that you can mention. For instance, like with the little Yorkie that had eye cookies and then rubbed its face on it. You know, we had taken a before photo and you could see the entire area here was just completely, it wasn't mad, but it just had such caked in gunk. Um, we took pictures of the products we used on the pet. You know, all of that. So that's what we did to protect ourselves. And because we had, we had not filed a claim, but we had called our insurance company. Our insurance company told us what to collect, what to look for, what would be useful both to them um, and if we chose not to file a claim, what we should have in that instance. Um, oh God, I hope I'm streaming right now. This is being really weird. I don't think it's streaming. This is what happened, guys. You get all fancy dancy and it's not streaming. Well, chicken noodle soup. Where is this? Oh boy, oh boy. Well, I'm just gonna keep talking and if I'm not streaming, I'm not streaming. So, You've collected the data, you've gotten pictures that you've had, hopefully you've taken before and afters if you guys have the, um, all of that stuff. If you guys have um, video, you've collected all of that and that's great, that's so important to have. So let's say you have all of that together. What is the next thing that you guys should do? And if you don't mind, give me one second, I'm gonna pop this open and see. Oh, it is good. Oh, perfect, Erin is saying, yes, you're streaming, I can see you here, you're perfect. Thank you so much, Erin, I really appreciate it. Sometimes I get so nervous. What are you gonna do? Um, and I again, I sorry this is gonna be a quick day today. Like I said, I have to be in that other group in about 11 minutes and I wanna open up the floor if you guys have any questions. So the third thing is show concern without admitting guilt. A lot of times customers don't understand what's happening to their pet and a lot of times it's up to us to educate. Um, for instance, you know, I, I used to shave a lot of matted cats when I started my business, my mobile business. So if I shave down an elderly, frail cat, there's gonna be different issues with that than if I were shaving a big, fat, three-year-old cat. Um, we have that issue a lot of times with dogs where we will shave a dog and guess what happens? Sometimes they're really itchy. Sometimes we unearth things that weren't there. And it's very hard for an owner, let's say if they you shave the pet and then there's something underneath there. Sometimes it's very hard for them to imagine that they've neglected their pet. Um, and it's really combative if somebody says to you, I, you know, I think you harmed my pet. And then for you to say, no, you neglected your pet and this is what happened, that's what we want to do but it's not productive. It's not productive because it's basically like, if you guys ever have small children or been around small kids, you know, you're basically calling them incompetent, stupid, etc. A lot of times, you know, we should have had that conversation before the groom. You know, we know the pet is really matted, that's why we're shaving it. And then say, listen, I don't know what's gonna be underneath there. He could be itchy, he could have you know, God forbid, open sores under there. I won't know till I start the process. Also, as a business owner or groomer, you should protect yourself by taking photos of anything of note. If you have shave a pet and you see an open wound or you see the skin getting really red, whatever it is, take a picture or take a video. Take a video with another person, if you can, that is seeing this. You know, call your other groomer over and say, hey, can you just tell me what you are seeing? And have them be on camera. And that way you can see that there are multiple people who are doing that. But you wanna make sure that you are, you know, you talk to them with concern. Because obviously this is their beloved pet. If they weren't beloved, they probably wouldn't have brought their pet to a groomer without a court order. Let's be real here. So, especially not you guys. If you're watching this, you probably have a great business. You generally want people that care about their pets. So let's say, for instance, you have a pet that you shaved and they're saying that 
you created an issue with the skin and coat and you did not have the conversation and you did not take those pictures, what are you going to do now? You're going, you know, you're going to compose something, whether it's a script or whether it is a um, email and you're going to show concern without admitting guilt. I'm so sorry to hear Fluffy is having such a hard time. I can imagine that it must be very painful to watch. And then, you know, when you've talked to your insurance company, they're going to suggest something. You know, whether it is, you know, they're going to suggest the pet go to a vet um, or whatever. And again, you're not going to admit guilt. So you wouldn't say, oh, take Fluffy to the vet necessarily, unless if it was something that you're willing to foot the bill. So for instance, let's say again, the matting, you know, I'm so sorry to hear Fluffy is having such a hard time. That must be very tough to watch. Must be very tough for you as a, you know, a pet parent. I like calling people pet parents. You don't like it. I don't like fur baby, but I like pet parent. You know, as a pet parent, I can imagine how hard that is for you. You know, what is your next step for Fluffy? You know, are you going to take him to the vet? You know, please let us know about his progress. You know, I'm not telling her to go to the vet. I'm asking her if she's going to the vet. And if she says, no, I'm just going to X, Y, Z. If she then asks me for an opinion, I have to be very careful because if I give medical advice, which sometimes it's incidentally medical advice, that's a big problem. I can't, it gets very tricky because uh, even let's say, they say you get water in the ear. I mean, how many times have you guys heard that? Oh, you know, a day later, they're like, oh, he has an ear infection from you uh, putting water in his ears. We told you to put cotton balls in his ears. And you're like, well, an ear infection takes more than a day to create. You know, and you can't call it, an, you can't diagnose an ear infection. You're not a veterinarian. So something you might do is say, I'm really sorry to hear Fluffy is having such a hard time. It must be really difficult for you to watch him in pain. I'm really sorry to hear that. You know, can you tell me what's going on and what your next steps are? You know, and I, I open it up like that because I want to know, are they taking him to the vet? When was the last time he went to the vet? You know, ideally you should have those vets notes. Look back in your notes. Remember before you called them, you called your insurance company to find out if ear issues were covered and what your deductible would be. Uh, my deductible right now is 500 bucks. So if a dog came, well, I should say cat. Cats don't really get ear infections. So we'll stick to dogs. I mean, they do, but not. it's not like the same thing at all. And I still bathe cats. It's just not, they just don't get them. And they do, but not like as frequently as dogs. Um, so I would be like, okay, did the ear smell yeasty and odory when this happened? You know, did I put any notes? Did I fail to communicate with that customer? And if I did, then A, shame on me. And then B, you know, that's why we do those things to protect our business because you might be footing that bill. Because... It's one of those situations where you can either pay, I mean, an ear infection nine times out of 10 is probably gonna cost you 200 bucks at best. Losing that customer is probably gonna cost me a lot more money. And that's a, that's a gamble. Um, you know, a lot of times when we fight people on small charges, we might say, listen, there's no way for me to know whether or not my business caused this. You know, I looked at my notes. I didn't notice any odor or any issue. You know, I bathe. At the time at my shop, we bathe 40 pets a day. We never, we don't have this happen frequently. I don't know what happened. Um, there's no way of me knowing whether or not my business caused this. However, as a courtesy, because you are a great customer, I am more than happy to pay up to X amount of dollars for Fluffy's vet bills. And I'll pay it directly to the veterinarian after speaking to the veterinarian. 
and I might spend a hundred bucks for Goodwill because that's a lot cheaper than dealing with all the backlash, unfortunately, of people going online saying that you hurt this pet. Now, if something's more serious, like a broken leg, torn ligaments, um, you know, God forbid someone accuses you of harming a pet and physically striking a pet. Um, and there are people that will, will say that. You know, it's crazy nowadays. That's why we have to protect ourselves with video, ideally, if not at least, you know, pictures. Um, you know, it's it's scary. Because, you know, what is a normal, like, I, I, I've definitely, like, my standard poodle, she's a bit of a diva. She only does this for me. She's really great for her groomer. But, like, when I shave her feet, she'll do, like, this thing. And she's, like, because she doesn't like clean feet. And she's literally, like, twisting her body. And she does, like, the side-to-side -side thing. And it drives me bananas. It drives me so crazy. Because then she'll, like, sit perfectly for her freaking groomer. It makes me want to, like, just, like, strangle my dog. Because it makes, it just, you know, they do that. Because you're the mom. Ugh. But, that said, if somebody watched me they would think I was hurting her. When I pluck her ears, the last time I plucked her ears at uh, my complex has a self dog wash, which is actually really well done. She started screaming. I wasn't even pulling the hair out yet. I flipped her ear and I went to go pluck. I literally just like flipped the ear, didn't even touch it yet. And, har, 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 har. and I'm like, what? What is your malfunction? And she's just that way. And the worst part is I took the goddamn dog to the vet Guess what? No ear infection. Because I'm like, you must have a problem. Nope, you're just a jerk. Happens. You know what? Sometimes it happens, right? So, but if I was a groomer in that instance, you know, at my shop and people were in front of me, that could look really bad. So having video of that. So like if I had a groom dog like that at my shop, we took video of it and saved it. Because if there were ever an instance, we would show people, we'd do the video, we'd flip the ear, have the hand here, having somebody video me, and having the dog scream to show that I was not physically abusing their dog. Um, but it's hard. It's hard when you get accused because you want, it's really hard when this job is so emotionally, you know, physically and mentally exhausting. And then people think that you would ever harm a pet or that you wouldn't take responsibility for accidentally harming a pet. It's really emotionally wearing. Um, just like the automate your, you know, put your business on autopilot class that I just taught for the National Cat Groomers Badass Cat Grooming Conference. Um, that class, by the way, guys, will actually be in my Grow Wealthy Grooming membership next month. Um, and in the meantime, we will... Um, you know, or you can purchase that individually as well. But we talked about how if this, then that. So to putting things available, that way they're protected. Having layers of protection, having them be in your everyday, because you never know who that client is going to be that is going to potentially accuse you. Um, I remember we had an Aussie, we, it was their second Aussie. Um, they had lost their elder dog and they'd gotten a new Aussie and they actually accused us of, um, of like punching their dog. And I don't think they realized how offensive what they were saying is. But they're like, every time he comes in, he shakes. You know, and this pup, this dog had been done since they literally brought him to my shop before they brought him home because he smelled like farm dog. And I was like, yeah, like they're like, oh, he shakes every time he comes in. And I'm like, he doesn't particularly love to be groomed. And they said, yeah, but Olive, our last dog, didn't shake. And I said, right, but she was a different dog and she had different personality traits. And he doesn't like to be groomed. Nothing I could do. You could give that dog peanut butter and give him whatever you wanted. That dog did not like to be groomed. And so long story short, they, they assumed that somebody had physically harmed this dog. They said, well, did one of your new employees hurt our dog and I said of course not and thankfully I had video and I could show them on multiple occasions 
and we actually would have a video monitor. It was a, a baby video monitor, like baby monitor with video on it. And I plugged it in and uh, he would just yowl the entire time. I mean, he was actually, they're like, oh, you guys always bring him in and out so quick. And I'm like, yeah, cause he's just like not a happy camper. So, you know, and that was really tough for me because I had this puppy, I had seen him since he was eight weeks old. It didn't feel good, but you know, I sympathize with them because they don't understand what we do and they want to protect their pet. They love their pet. So I'm going to just look really quick. Um, yep. So I'm going to go ahead. I've got to actually skidoo because I got to go start the other, I'm not doing the cocktail hour for that. But as always, guys, I want to remind you the three different ways that you can work with me. I offer one-on-one -on -one business coaching. If you want that monthly, it is only $9.97 a month. Um, if you are looking for a one-time hour, it is only a $300 an hour for a strategy call. Personal Finance Leash is my 12-week course on how to get your money under control. That is only three easy payments of $1.99. We're actually starting this week. Uh, well, technically next week, we are starting our next session, which I'm super excited about. Um, Grow Wealthy Grooming is my membership. It is only $35 a month. And we are adding every month new classes. And I'm really excited about that. All right, guys. So thank you so much for being here. I know it was a little quick today, but I hope that was great information that helped you guys. So as always, happy grooming, guys.